business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11392 in the name of Angus Macdonald on the need for a direct ferry service between Scotland and Scandinavia. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr Macdonald, if you are ready and would like to start, you have seven minutes, please. Thank you, uh, President Officer. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to highlight in this chamber the issue of the need for a direct passenger and car ferry link between the UK and Scandinavia, an issue which has been of concern to me and campaigners for some time. At, at the outset, can I thank all the members who signed my motion, in particular those from the opposition benches, uh, which has enabled me to bring the issue to the chamber. Uh, I'm highlighting the issue here today because I feel we're missing a trick. Uh, both in attracting tourists with a high disposable income to Scotland and missing out on a direct transport link for Scottish exports from central Scotland and beyond. In recent years, we've seen the demise of historic direct passenger ferry routes between the UK and Scandinavia. In September 2008, we saw the last ferry sail from Newcastle to Stavanger, Haugesund and Bergen in Norway, uh, breaking a service that had lasted 130 years. Then last year, DFDS announced that they had decided to withdraw the Harwich to Esbjerg Denmark service, which in effect means there is now no direct passenger car ferry between the UK and Scandinavia. There are, of course, uh, small campaigns on both sides of the North Sea calling for the reintroduction of these services. Uh, one which seems to be gaining significant traction and support is the international campaign for the ferry to Norway, who have demonstrated that there certainly is considerable demand for the return of the UK-Norway ferry link. They have gathered a significant volume of evidence from campaign supporters and tour operators from the United Kingdom, Norway and throughout the Nordic region. The ICFN highlights that the Office for National Statistics reports a 48% rise in visitors from Norway to the UK and further analysis of these statistics shows that in 2013 there were 1.175 million travellers between Norway and the UK. Of these travellers, it said that approximately 8% are required to make the UK to Norway ferry route a profitable ferry passenger service. Now, that's all well and good, however, it clearly requires the will and investment from the private sector to make it happen, as there are, as always, state aid issues which hinder direct financial support from government. There is a glimmer of hope eh, that the recently established firm called Norwegian Seaways will resurrect the Newcastle to Norway service, which, if successful, would reintroduce the historic service and see high spending Norwegians returning to Scotland giving them the opportunity to both visit Scotland's vibrant cities as well as a rich and historic countryside and allowing us to capitalise uh, on the goodwill towards Scotland from our Nordic neighbours. And let's not forget the citizens of the Nordic countries are statistically some of the most frequent travellers in the world with nearly 50% of their travels to a foreign country. The Scandinavian countries also have some of the highest per capita income with Norway at the forefront with an average per capita income of over £42,000. Now, our tourist industry could do with some of that. There are, of course, legitimate commercial reasons for the previous services being withdrawn. DFDS's ferry service from Harwich to Esbjerg was abandoned in part due to high fuel costs, which we have seen in recent months is no longer the issue that it was. Another issue which has made ship operators nervous is the increasing costs for the new sulphur reduction regulations set by the International Maritime Organization. Ships now passing through an emission control area, which includes northern European waters, must cut their sulphur emissions or face fines. This demands that ships cut sulphur content in the fuels they use to 0.1% compared with current rules allowing them up to 3.5% sulphur content. And in order to meet these new directives uh, set to help reduce the amount of emissions released, shipping and ferry services are required to use low sulphur fuel or fit their engines with a a sulphur filtration system. Now, I know that the fuel producers are already addressing that issue. Um, in my Falkirk East constituency, the operators of the Grangemouth refinery, Ineos, have installed sulphur recovery units at considerable cost, which is going some way to addressing the issue of sulphur content. So, as, times, uh, as time moves on, we see the arguments against the introduction of new or former ferry routes diminish. I therefore hope that given there are less hurdles in the way for commercial operators to start new services, that the Scottish Government, perhaps in partnership with the Scotland Office, Scottish Development International and interested regional transport partnerships, 
investigate the feasibility of establishing a new ferry link, link between Scotland and our neighbours across the North Sea. We are watching closely whether there is any prospect of the Newcastle to Norway service being introduced. Clearly, if the Newcastle to Norway ferry was to be successfully resurrected in the near future, then there would be no need for a Scottish service. And I'm aware that Fergus Ewing, uh, Minister for Business, Energy and Tourism, has been actively involved in talks with the North, e North East of England Local Enterprise Partnership, and I hope that the resur resurrection of the ferry to Norway has been one of the main items for discussion at these talks. Joint working between the Scottish Government and the North East LEP would clearly be of benefit to both the Scottish and the North East of England economies. However, if the Newcastle service is not to be resurrected, then there should be no doubt that a direct link between Scotland and the Scandinavian countries could provide a valuable connection, both aiding an increase in trade and an increase in tourist footfall from Scandinavian citizens with high disposable incomes. In my view, there are two, two options which would benefit Scotland directly. Number one, a Rosyth to Norway Denmark service, and two, and albeit less likely, an Aberdeen to Norway service. Rosyth, of course, already has a passenger terminal facilities in place, which it still uses for visiting cruise ships. And from informal discussions I've had with Fourth, fourth Ports officials, they would certainly welcome approaches from interested ferry operators. Clearly, however, it would require significant financial investment from ferry operators and goodwill from, from government, both national and local, on both sides of the North Sea. Now, approximately uh, five years ago, Norwegian ferry operator Fjordline considered an Aberdeen to Stavanger Bergen service. However, in checking recently with the CEO of Fjordline, Ingvald Fardal, he confirmed to me that the shipping company does not currently have any plans for establishing a new route from Stavanger to Aberdeen with their priorities over the next few years being their existing three routes between Norway and Denmark and one route between Norway and Sweden. However, encouragingly, their evaluation is that there could be a market between the UK and Norway during four to six of the summer months. However, he cited that autumn, winter and early spring have limited potential primarily due to increased competition from low-budget airlines such as Ryanair and Norwegian Air Shuttle. The other Scottish option from Rosyth to either Norway or Denmark or a triangular route between all three would be a much more viable option. So in closing, presiding officer, it's clear we have a small number of options which, with cooperation, could be a reality. With the recent reduction in the cost of fuel, these options become even more realistic and not just part of a wish list. And with the backing mm -hmm. of the Scottish Government, Scottish Development International, Local Transport and Enterprise Partnerships, we can see the return of this historic link with our Nordic neighbours, and I look forward to cross-party consensus on this issue as we get closer to our goal. Thank you. Many thanks. And I call on David Stewart to be followed by Kenny McCaskill. Uh, thank you, uh, President Officer. I want to start by warmly congratulating my former Public Petitions Committee colleague, uh, Angus MacDonald, on securing uh, tonight's uh, debate. Uh, I support the objective of Mr Macdonald's motion and was pleased to have signed up to it, I think, just before Christmas and hope in a small way help contribute to securing the debate tonight. Uh, Mr Macdonald, as you may guess, hails from the Western Isles, um, where ferries are not just a mode of travel, but are really a way of life. And when I met the leader of the Council last month in Stornoway, we spent the majority of our discussion talking about the future of ferry services in Scotland from the important strategic level to the mundane but very important subject of ensuring the times are changed to ensure that newspapers arrive in Stornoway before lunchtime, which I'm sure Mr Macdonald uh, will sign up to um, as well. Um, I also have an interest in ferry services, presiding officer. In the last uh, parliament, I was part of the previous uh, transport uh, committee, um, which carried out a major inquiry into ferry services I underlined the development of new services in particular, and we held, just by the by, many consultations, uh, in, including in Shetland and indeed in Dunoon. And for members that haven't read it, I would certainly endorse that report. But I do agree with Mr Macdonald that re-establishing direct links between Scotland and Norway would help support um, our economy in Scotland further. And many uh, ports, for example, in Scotland, which I'm particularly interested in, have seen uh, an increasing in employment an increasing investment in trade from international shipping operations. Uh, could I particularly uh, flag up harbours such as Scrabster, which have invested extremely heavily, 
And just touching on my own region, um, Inverness and Rigorn and Stornoway, just to touch on harbours I've visited recently, I've all seen major investment. But looking wider than that, I know, of course, that Aberdeen and Rosyth are excellent uh, uh, ports with great facilities, and I'm sure my colleague Lewis MacDonald behind me would want to endorse at least half of that um, argument. Will Mr Stewart take an intervention? I, I'm very grateful to Mr. Mr Stewart for accepting that intervention. Uh, will he indeed confirm that the plans for expansion of the harbour at Aberdeen create many possibilities for improved traffic uh, across the North Sea to a number of potential destinations? I'm, I'm very happy to agree that, and I'm sure the Minister has heard his strong endorsement uh, extremely well. So obviously then a direct link will bring in further investment through increased tourism, which is important, and also for freight transport. And on uh, the infrastructure committee, I think if, if I read the agenda correctly, I think that committee, which I will join tomorrow, are actually looking at doing inquiry into freight in the future. Could I recommend to Ms MacDonald, if he's not already read it, uh, the book Who Pays the Ferryman by uh, Roy Pedersen, an ex-Highland uh, councillor, who I suspect is perhaps nearer his political perspective than my own, but nevertheless has great expertise in the area of ferries. Incidentally, he claims to be the inventor of road equivalent tariff. Now, I do accept that's perhaps not the same as penicillin, radio or r radar. Nevertheless, road equivalent tariff is something to be looked at, and uh, I would endorse um, his uh, expertise, which developed from his time as a young man working for HIDB. Reading the book, uh, presiding officer, um, and applying the principles very quickly in the few minutes I've got left, there's a couple of things I would really endorse that perhaps Mr MacDonald would touch on. We've got to look at the frequency of the service. I think we've got to look, if it's a vehicle ferry, which I believe is essential, at looking at practical issues like the shortest feasible route. I also believe that we've got to look at efficient vessel design, which is absolutely crucially important for the crossing, because, of course, this will minimise capital costs and fuel consumption and perhaps avoid some problems we found in other ferry routes, particularly, I think, if you look at the Gurik to Danoon through Agile ferries, there was problems of not having the correct ferry for that route. So in my few seconds left, President Officer, my summary would be you need to look at the right routes with the right speed and one best example I would give you is the p and uh, Express catamaran service, which actually does 40 knots, the fastest in Scotland. We need to look at having the right port facility and avoid the problems, for example, in Danoon, where we've not been able to use the link span, uh, link span properly with the right frequency um, of services. So finally, I believe that uh, this is a very positive idea whose time has come, and I wish Mr MacDonald very well in his future campaign in this area. Thanks very much. I now call on Kenny McCaskill to be followed by Alex Johnson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I, too, uh, would like to pay tribute to Angus MacDonald for bringing this. I think it is uh, an important concept. It's one that has been around for a good few years. Uh, as I was saying to him earlier, I myself remember going to speak at a conference in Christian Soon some decade ago, uh, supported by Fourth Ports Limited, where the authority in the Christian Soon area was very keen. Equally, uh, despite the fact that I think there is a good deal of desire for it and there's good reason uh, why it should be, I don't think we should underestimate, and I think, to be fair to Angus MacDonald, he hasn't underestimated the difficulties and the challenges. It is, as I say, I think a good idea, uh, and we need to work at, at it and for it. And equally, I would concur with what David uh, Stewart was saying. I have read Roy Peterson's book. I, I know him personally, and I would recommend it. Uh, it tends to be more geared towards Scotland than uh, international links, but the points are made within that book. I think there's good reason why we should do it. The links with Scotland and Scandinavia are long-standing. There's something manifestly wrong when you look at a globe, an atlas, a map, and you see the close proximity. Uh, Scots travelled across there long before they were going down and back up the Thames. When I was in Christian Sund, I remember going out for a walk from the hotel I was staying in to notice that the street the hotel was situated on was Ramsey Gatta. Uh, I was told when I raised this that the street in from the airport had been Dal Straza. The major company that we also went to see that was involved in fishing uh, was Gordon, and indeed other Scots names abound, whether Greek or anywhere else. Uh, that was due to emigration encouraged by King Hakon back in uh, post-Jacobite era. Uh, but just
just because there's those historic links doesn't mean it can operate it today, and we shouldn't underestimate the challenges. Low-cost carriers have come in, and that has undermined the efforts. And I can simply concur with the comment made by Angus Macdonald. Although I went to Christian Sund a decade ago, some four years ago, my son went to study for two years at Gothenburg University in Sweden. As the uh, caring father, I thought, oh, well, I could drive him over. I'll go and get a ferry from Newcastle. And as Angus Macdonald has said, no, you can't. I thought, I'll go down to Hull. Uh, no, you can't. Eventually, the only route, as he pointed out, was actually Esberg to Denmark. Uh, that, I understand from him, is simply now gone. And then I would have had to travel all the way up, having crossed the Orison back up through Sweden. There's something manifestly wrong with that. I do appreciate that it was much easier, apart from initially going with my son to deposit his belongings, it was much easier to take the Ryanair flight into Gothenburg, and that's how people tend to go between Edinburgh and Gothenburg, but not all. And it certainly doesn't deal with the trade. And there are huge links, not simply in the oil sector, between Scotland and Norway. Uh, the fishing industry is significant, and I do remember discussions at one stage with Fourth Ports, where it was considered whether we should be able to take the Rosyth to Brugge ferry up to Aberdeen that would have linked in also with ferries coming across from Norway. So as I say, I think there's a desire for it. We have to recognise the challenges, not simply that we are in the age of low-cost travel through airlines. Despite the challenges that causes for the environment, it's probably a reason why we do have to look at other alternatives, because we cannot go on uh, with the problems that we're causing in the environment. Uh, and low-cost travel uh, is desired, but we have to look elsewhere. The challenge is significant. It's not simply about getting one government, but probably two, if not more. It's about interacting, as we'll no doubt hear from the Minister, with the European Commission. It's about making sure that not only do we have ferry operators, but we've also got those who operate ports, given that they've been privatised in the main, the main ones here in Scotland. We have to make sure that there is, in fact, a travel and a trade. I think the trade can be generated equally in terms of the travel. Many might choose to go by the Ryanair flight. Others will wish to take a more sedentary journey and enjoy the sail, as we see with the growth in cruise liners. So, as I say, I recognise the difficulties, but I think this is a matter that's long overdue. I pay tribute to the member for raising it and will support his campaign and, indeed, any other campaign being raised to try and ensure that we can deliver it. And I now call on Alex Johnson to be followed by Cameron McCannon. Can I begin, Presiding Officer, by congratulating Angus Macdonald on bringing this matter before Parliament. Uh, it's one of great interest and one which uh, I support in principle, and I will go into that in slightly greater detail before I finish my remarks. Uh, I'd also like to thank Kenny McCaskill for reminding us that, uh, in the light-hearted term, certainly, that uh, the cross, uh, crossing of the North Sea by ship is something which has been happening for a good 1,200 years, and the Scandinavians were not always as friendly then as they are today. So, as a result, I think we need to work uh, very carefully to ensure that we can uh, restore ferry links, if possible. There are a number of challenges, however. Uh, already mentioned is the fact that cheap air travel does exist uh, between Norway uh, and Scotland today. And as a result, uh, there is significant competition for passengers on that route. Also, it has to be noted that while there isn't a ferry crossing the North Sea today, there is a considerable uh, trade in freight charters across the North Sea, not least working in the oil and gas industry, where there is a common interest on both sides. We have heard mention of the issue of vessel, vessel design, which brings to mind the fact that vessels are not always designed for the routes on which they find themselves. In fact, experience of the Rosyth Zebruga route uh, and the difficulties that were faced there seem to indicate that while that route was profitable, the problem was that the ship that was plying that route would be more profitable elsewhere, and as a consequence, the ship was lost. So it's an extremely difficult set of circumstances we find ourselves dealing with. A competitive route uh, where there is no ferry service at the moment and where whoever decides to take that ferry service forward will be taking a considerable risk. That's why I think it's extremely important that the suggestion that's carried in this uh, motion uh, is taken quite seriously. Because everyone who has an interest in this, whether it's government, local government in some areas, or commercial interests need to work together. 
the port authorities here in Scotland or the United Kingdom, along with those on the other side of the potential route, need to understand the demands of any route very, very strictly before they take this forward. I think it will also require the government here in Scotland, if the route is to be uh, run from here, to interpret the European rules on competition and subsidy to ensure that where money can be made available to underpin such a service, it's done so on a limited scale, one which assists any operator to avoid the fluctuations of demand and cost, but one which ultimately will find its way past those European regulators, which is not always easy. There is a great deal to be achieved if we can uh, achieve the objectives that have been set out in this motion. It is not easy, but we must do all we can to ensure that we improve links between uh, Scotland and Northern Europe. Because at the moment, those who wish to transport freight in particular across that in smaller quantities require to travel to the south of England and then drive back north again. That's a disaster if our objective is to reduce carbon dioxide emissions, but it's also a disaster if your objective is to transport goods competitively and sell them in another market. It's important to remember that it is perhaps equally important, if not more important, to the economy of those countries uh, on the other side of the North Sea to be able to link into the UK economy. Because those who have relied, relied on easier access into Central Europe will fast be realising that the UK is the fastest growing part of the European economy and that is where their markets may expand in future if markets are lost in Germany and other uh, Central European nations. So for that reason, I think this is an opportune moment for us to be discussing uh, the possibility of ferry services across the North Sea once again. If we all work together, and this gets a fair wind, no pun intended, I think we can actually uh, achieve something. So now's the time to talk about it. Let's get together and have these discussions. Many hey, thanks. <clears throat> I now call on Cameron Buchanan, after which we move the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As a frequent visitor or a frequent traveller to Scandinavia for many, many years and also to the continent by car, I used to use that ferry from Rosyth quite a bit. The problem with it was that it had a great speed, at very slow speed up the fourth, and it took too long, therefore the freight people didn't take it. That's the problem with Rosyth. It was a great place, but it was too slow. Aberdeen I also took a couple of times, though that also took rather a long time. I'm a great believer in having a ferry service for Scandinavia. It's very important, just as Angus MacDonald said, particularly because we have so many ties to Scandinavia. But I wonder if Denmark isn't maybe the best place to have it to Esbjerg, because it's a shorter crossing. And that's the key, I think, if there's a crossing that can be shorter and not too, uh, not too extended. Rosyth was excellent. They had very nice luxury ferries, but it, it didn't prove econo economical. The freight people didn't take it. That going up at 15 knots up the fourth estuary was just too long. So I wonder if we shouldn't do something like Newcastle, where there's a bigger catchment area. Aberdeen would be great, but people aren't going to go to Aberdeen except from Glasgow or Edinburgh, but they're not going to go from England up to Aberdeen to take a freight ferry. And I think that's the key. I think we do need to do it, and I think we can, with a, if there's a will towards it, I'm very much in favour of it, and I do hope we can get it. And I fully support Angus MacDonald's motion. Thank you. Thanks very much. I now call Minister Derek Mackay to close... The debate on behalf of the government, seven minutes are there by Minister, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I too would like to thank Angus MacDonald, MSP, for raising this motion. It's important to recognise the strong cultural and historic ties between Scotland and Scandinavia, and the many links both with oil and gas, fishing and numerous other industries, along with an increasing number of high-spend tourists visiting our country. These links result in considerable economic benefits to our economy, and this would only be enhanced by further increasing the range of travel options available to uh, tourists and businesses. And as you know, the Scottish Government has been very active in exploring ways of increasing the number of tourists coming to Scotland. And this has been seen with a huge success in increasing the number of direct flight routes from Norway to Scotland from six in 2009 to 18 and 2015, a challenge that other members and an opportunity as well that other members have picked up on. 
Now, the Scottish Government certainly wants to see the expansion of direct ferry connections from Scotland to Scandinavia, which could bring a different type of tourist to those already travelling by air. We have a very productive relationship with European ferry operators, and we continue to explore all possibilities. We have been approached on occasion by parties exploring the potential for a Norway service calling at Scottish Port, and we have welcomed discussions and engaged uh, them engage with them enthusiastically, offering all the support we can within the confines of state aid regulations that members have also mentioned. Now, to date, they have yet to overcome the challenges involved in putting in place a viable service, but we will continue to work with any potential operator that brings forward such a proposal. I am sure colleagues in the Chamber will be aware that any such service would have to operate on a commercially viable basis, and this would be a matter for any prospective ferry operator to fully consider. It is important to recognise the enormous contribution the maritime sector makes to our uh, economy, and any additional ferry routes from Scotland to Europe would therefore only increase the economic benefits throughout Scotland and would bring considerable advantages, both economic uh, and uh, environmental. One of the one area of the maritime sector in particular which is continuing to succeed is the cruise industry. Scotland is a UK market leader for inbound cruise tourism, with almost 400,000 people visiting our ports, injecting £41 million into the Scottish economy. And passenger numbers for this year's calls are forecast to be up on last year. So, in line with our team Scotland efforts to support air route development to Scotland, Visit Scotland equally supports the development of inbound visitors to Scotland via ferry. And this has included campaigning and carrying out uh, collaborative partnership marketing campaigns with Superfast and Norfolk Line on their direct routes into Scotland, and continues with partners, including uh, DFDS Seaways on their North of England routes, where there are considerable opportunities to grow the proportion of passengers who turn right on disembarking. And looking specifically at Norway in 2013, there were over 100,000 visitors to Scotland spending £87 million, Scotland's sixth largest international market. And this has increased from 75,000 visitors from Norway in 2010. So we know that Scotland's well connected to Norway by air with those direct flights available via Aberdeen, Edinburgh and Glasgow and Sumbra. So the challenge will be for ferry operators uh, to compete as a different mode of transport. We will continue to work on a Team Scotland approach to look at the potential uh, of new services, and that will involve a range of marketing and uh, tourism campaigns focused on uh, intelligent trade uh, support. Scottish Enterprise can help evaluate potential freight market and may also be able to offer joint funding support around marketing in this element. The Scottish Government has also explored options for other forms of commercial support that we may be able to offer potential operators as part of their overall business plan. And this highlights some of the ways in which we can assist ferry operators encourage more tourists to choose Scotland as their holiday destination. But of course, there are some parallels and challenges in the experience around the Rusaif to Zabruga ferry service. The challenges faced by that route over time are similar to those that would be faced with any potential new ferry operator. Despite the recent drop, and I think it was David Stewart that mentioned this, despite the recent drop in wholesale oil and gas prices, marine oil prices have become more expensive due to the introduction of the EU Directive on Sulphur and Marine Fuels. Regarding any possible Scottish Government funding, we have to be clear that although beneficial to our economy, a Norway service could not be considered a lifeline route like those to the Western and the Northern Isles, so our options to provide direct funding support are indeed more limited. Around state aid rules, it limits possible funding to freight facilities grant and waterborne freight grant schemes. Grant awards under these schemes are dependent on the transfer of freight from road to water which is unlikely to be significant on a Scotland to Scandinavia route. Any new passenger service would also require freight custom to be commercially viable. It should also be noted that there are currently freight services operating between Aberdeen and Norway, albeit not for passengers. A further challenge for operators of passenger ferry services is the availability of suitably configured uh, vessels such as Alec Johnson covered in terms of cabin spaces, passenger facilities coupled with fuel efficiency, of course. Um, 
the, member will, the minister will know, President Officer, that I raised the issue of vessel design being a crucial factor in how viable it is and the difference between a 40-knot catamaran that I mentioned from P&O and some of the slower vessels that some other members have mentioned are absolutely crucial. Speed makes all the difference. And I think where there has been failures across Scotland, it's where we've had any ad hoc vessel being used rather than the vessel be spoke for that particular route. Mr. And certainly within that point, there's a number of issues and the Scottish Government will continue to be supportive. Indeed, my next point was going to be how creative government can be in trying to find the right vessel and providing support, uh, such as has been the case with DF, uh, DS. So the Scottish Government will do everything we can to help uh, ferry operators overcome challenges such uh, as these. Uh, short of time, presiding officer, despite the challenges, we'll continue to encourage ferry operators to keep the option open of introducing passenger ferry service uh, from Scotland uh, under review. And the Scottish Government do stand ready to work closely with any ferry operator looking up to set any new route linking Scotland directly to Europe. Many thanks. And that concludes uh, this evening's and today's business. And I now close this meeting of Parliament. Thank you all.